All right, so I want to be encouraging everybody to be reading the Bible each and every day. Uh, and so in the, the movie War Room, some of you guys have seen this, but there's a quote on there that I really like. It says, read the Bible each day. Let the word of God mold you into a person of prayer. And so if we would just allow God the opportunity to speak into our life each and every day through the word of God, the more that we understand God's word, the more he's going to mold and transform our life into the likeness of Christ. And so that is done through spending time in the Word of God. For the sermon today, I want this to be able to impact your head, your heart, and your hands. So yes, I want you to understand more about the Bible here, but we need to let that sink down into our heart. And when we would allow the message and the Word to transform our heart. So our hard heart, it needs to be softened so that we would allow God's word to seep into our life to transform us. And there's power that happens when we allow God's word to transform our heart. It directly impacts our hands. What you're going to do with your life, people are going to see differently because you understand God's word that's been filtered through your heart. And so uh, it's really important for the sermon that our head, our heart, and our hands are all impacted because of this. So in order for that to happen, we have to apply the word of God. Uh, in Proverbs, it talks about the benefits of wisdom. It says, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out, for insight and ask for understanding. So that insight and that understanding is understanding how we are to use God's word to uh, be applied into our life. Uh, search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain the knowledge of God. And I truly believe that knowledge of God truly comes when we start to apply his word into our life. This is today's comic and it says, Ralph! I appreciate your commitment, but what I said in my sermon was, I hope y'all become tithers. Okay. Tithers, not tigers, all right? Okay. And so uh, this entire month, we're going to be on this sermon series. It is the A, B, C, D, E of generosity. That is going to be our sermon series for this entire month. And today's sermon titled, it is titled, Always Be Generous. And so the sermon question, there was, a, there was a time in my life that I really struggled with my finances when it came to giving that to the church. So I have needed to ask myself this question, when is a good time to be generous to God? And I'm so happy that today, I'm not bragging or anything like that, but I'm so happy that today, financially, I've come to a better point in my life where I know where I stand as far as my finances and my faith goes. But maybe you've asked yourself that question too. When is a good time for you to be generous to God? And so today, if there's only one thing that you can walk away and remember, this one thing is this. I want you to, to remember, be generous always. So this is my disclaimer for all of you. So I am not saying that I want you to give your money to the church so that I can get your money. In fact, I'm going to put Ed on the spot right now, okay? Ed, how many checks have you written to Pastor Yao for his salary? No. Okay, so that's my disclaimer. Too often in the church, we have, we've had a bad rep. Because you know what? People say, well, I always go to church, and the pastor's just always asking for more money, so obviously that money goes into his pocket. And I'm letting you know that here at the cross, I don't get your money. My elder Ed, that's been my elder for the last two years now, He's never written a single check that he gets to put on there. Pastor Yao's salary. So I want you to know 
that your money does not come into my pocket. Your money goes into God's kingdom. So I don't want you to think the only reason why Pastor Yao is doing this is, is so that he can pocket more money. A lot of you guys know I work one job and, and now actually two jobs. I work two jobs so that I can do this. So I don't make any money doing this for you guys. This is my other disclaimer. This is the only month out of the entire year that you will hear me preach about generosity by giving. Again, it's just like people are like, every time I go to church, the pastor is always, always talking about money, money, money. A lot of you guys have been here at the cross long enough. And like I asked Mary last time, if you've been here at the cross long enough, you're going to know this is the only month out of the entire year that I'm going to be talking about generosity by giving. After this month is done and over with, you're not going to be hearing me talk about generosity by giving money anymore until next year in November. Here's my other thing I want to tell you guys about generosity. This is not something that I want from you. This is something that I want for you. So I'm not asking for your money. But I'm wanting for you to be able to have this spirit of generosity. So it's not from you I want. This is something for you that I want. Okay? All right. So at this time, uh, we've been having some interesting issues today with our technology but at this time i am going to be playing uh, this video just to kind of get us started here uh just to kind of talk about generosity and uh let's see if i can pull this video off if i can find it here um So the ABCDEs of generosity, today we're going to be taking a look at this word always. Always be generous. How many people feel about their money? This is how I think a lot of people feel about their money. Take a look. Right? This is my money. Don't you be taking away my money from me. I worked really hard for this money. So if you want to know the honest truth, this might be really humbling. Um, this is kind of a smack in our face. The truth is, it ain't your money. It's God's money. You don't own that money, okay? That money belongs to God. It's his money. He's nice enough to give you that money so that you can have that money. But if you think for a second that this is my hard-earned money, 
It is mine. Guess what? It ain't yours. It is God's money. You are called to be a good steward or caretaker of God's money. That's it. We are called to be caretakers of the resources that he has given to us. And one of those resources that's really near and dear to all of us is our finances. But God is saying here, I'm giving this money to you. And now it's your responsibility to be able to take care of the money that I have given for you. So you got to take care of it. Just like how God has given you everything in your, in your life for you to take care of. The money that God has given to you is a responsibility for you to take care of. Just like how you have a responsibility to take care of your spouse. Men, God has blessed you to give you a wonderful wife in your life. Because of this, it is your responsibility to take care of your wife. You are to love her. You are to take care of her. You are to be her best friend. That's you. Ladies, same thing. God has also blessed many of us to have children. That is a great responsibility that we need to take seriously. Your kids depend on you for you to take care of them. Because of this, God is giving you a great responsibility and you need to be a great steward of that resource. God has blessed you with children. Some of you guys have a house. Some of you guys live in an apartment or whatever like that. You need to take care of that. That's your responsibility. Some of you guys have a vehicle. It might be a beater with a heater, but guess what? It still gets you from point A to point B. You need to be a steward of that. And most importantly for this month, God has blessed you to be able to have some money. You might not have all the money, but God has given you some money. And with that money, God is saying, how are you going to take care of that money for me? Because too often, this is our mentality. I deserve it. It's my money. So I don't need somebody telling me what I'm going to do with my money. I work my butt off to get that money. So what I'm going to do with that money is up to me. But is it really just up to you? Or do you have a responsibility as a steward of God's money to take care of that? You didn't get that degree so you can get all that money. As I'm looking out in this room, there's some individuals in this room. Y'all have an associate's degree. You have a tech degree. You have a bachelor's degree. You have a master's degree. We have people that come here that have a PhD. They have their doctorate's degree. And guess what? You got that degree. And God has blessed you so much to get that job because of that degree. But let me ask you this. Who gave you that brain? God. Before you were born, God knew how smart you were going to be. God knew what your IQ was going to be. And for some of us in this room that have degrees, God gave you your brain so that you can get that degree. And with that brain, with that degree, now you've got a good paying job. You've got some good money coming in. But don't you think for a second that all that brain, you just got it yourself, huh? God blessed you from heaven above with that brain so you can get your resources today. Or some of you guys might be thinking, you know what? You didn't get that job so that you can get all that money by yourself. So some of you guys might be thinking, well, guess what? I got that job myself. I was the one that landed that job. But God blessed you so much. I've come to realize that now that in life, it's not what you know, it's who you know. 
A lot of you guys have the current job that you have today, not because you just got it on your own, but God gave you a connection. God gave you a relationship. God got you in the door somehow through someone else. Those connections are a blessing to you. The people in your life is God's way of blessing you. And one of the great rewards of those blessings is you got that job and now you got the income that's coming. But that's all because God is putting people into your life that's helping you to get that job. Now, I've had many jobs in my life now, and I know that I'm looking at this room. A lot of you guys have had many jobs too. But a lot of us can say, I didn't get that job on my own. Somebody needed to vouch for me. Somebody needed to stick their neck out to say, you know what? You should hire this person because they're going to be a good worker. So you got hired, and now you got income coming in. That's because God loves you. Or, some of you guys, you might be thinking, okay? So, you didn't get that promotion so that you can get all that money. Some of you might be thinking, you know what? I just worked my butt off at that job. I showed up early, 15 minutes Lombardi time, okay? I showed up early every time. I go to work, and I work my butt off. I'm a good worker. And I treat all of my coworkers well. These are things that I have done. Therefore, you know what? When it came for that promotion, I got it. People looked around and they said, this person needs to be promoted. And you might be thinking, I got that promotion all by myself. But think about it. Your ability to understand the job that you need to do, because some jobs are not easy. God also helped you. So that you can go to that job and be successful and be that quality employee that they want you to be. That all came from God's blessing from heaven above. Or sometimes we think, you know what? You didn't get all that money by yourself. Sometimes that money is through an insurance. Sometimes it's through an inheritance. Sometimes somebody just donates that to you or just gives that to you. There have been times in our life when we unexpectedly got money and you did squat to get that money. But God says, okay, I'm going to bless you with this. Don't you think for a second that somehow that you were just so awesome that God just blessed you? No. All of that is God's blessing that he's poured upon your life because he loves you so much. God is pouring his blessings to you. For how long now? You and I, we have been the receivers of God's blessing. So God's been just giving you great blessings. But how much of that great blessings are you giving back to God? God loves you so much. That's his money that he's giving to you. So don't you think for a second that that's all your money. Everything that you see in your life right now. Your wife that's wearing that beautiful dress. Your house that's got all the beautiful knickknacks. That car that you can get into and it has a heater. The roof over your head. All of these are blessings from Him. Everything that you got, it all belongs to God. Nothing belongs to you. God is just saying, I'm going to allow you to take care of this. What are you going to do with that? It's all God's money. The Bible tells us that everything belongs to God. Nothing really belongs to us. In Psalms chapter 24, verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and it's all of its people belong to him. All right, there you go. Everything in this entire world, it really doesn't belong to us. It all belongs to God. God tells us, I created everything. And because I created everything, everything is mine. What did you create? Did you create the trees? Did you create the plants? You did none of that stuff. Everything belongs to God. The child that you have, you didn't create that God. I didn't see you molding that kid. All right, God, give him all that IQ, right? Okay? You did none of that stuff. That's all God's blessing. Hebrews says... 
For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. Yeah, somebody came and built your house, but it was God that blessed you with all of those things. In 1 Corinthians, it says, For the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Okay, so what's the point of this? The point's really simple. If you think you own whatever you own, you don't. Because it all belongs to God. God is allowing you to be a caretaker of what he has. He's so nice that he's saying, okay, I'm giving you this card, giving you this resource, this, this money. Take care of it for me. And so, uh, today when we heard the story about the widow's two coins, okay, uh, we've already talked about that Bible verse. So when we give a gift to God, we think about how much we give. But God thinks about how much we don't give instead, and that is... He thinks about how much we have remaining. So for people like you and I, the way that we think about giving is this. All right, how much do I have to give to God? So that's like, all right, so I got 10 bucks. Is this how much I have to give to you, God? That's how people think about generosity and giving. But God doesn't think like that. Instead, how God thinks of it is this. How much... Do they not give? In other words, God knows all the money that he's given for you. He knows what you're giving him. But more importantly, he wants to know, hey, how much are you holding back from not giving to me? Because that money that I've given to you, it's, it's just mine. And so are you going to afford it thinking that it's all yours when it's just really mine? People think in terms of dollar amount, God doesn't think of it like that. So like a rich man might be thinking, well, I've been so good to God. And yet I'm a millionaire, but you know what? I come to church and I'm giving hundreds. But think about the millions that you have in comparison to the little amount that you're giving. So the amount that you have, it pales compared to the little amount that you're actually giving. God really doesn't need your money. God doesn't get any richer because we're, we're giving God back his money. He already owns everything. He wants to know how faithful you are going to be with him with what he has blessed you with. So, like, don't think that, like, okay, God, if I give you this money, you're going to be that much more richer. He can't get any richer. It's already his. He just wants to know how faithful you are going to be when it comes to giving back to him your portions. So from a dollar amount, yes, the rich man, uh, the rich people, they gave more. But in God's eyes, the poor widow had given more than all the rich people put together. After she gave, she had nothing left. She gave it all to God. And even though it was only a fraction of a penny, it was worth more to God than all the money that was given by the rich. I truly believe that when we give, God sees our heart, okay? God wants us to be a cheerful giver. We give that money cheerfully. That woman had nothing left, but she gave it from the deepest part of her heart because she loved God. God don't want us to be reluctantly giving. I mean, if you're grudgingly given like that $100 bill and you don't really want to, God don't really want your money. He wants your heart. And when your heart is right with God, you're going to be giving in the right way. And so our heart aligns with our finances. I can definitely tell you a long time ago, my heart was, with not, was not with God. And because my heart was not with God, I gave grudgingly. But today, I've matured in my walk with the Lord. And my faith is that much more stronger and better. I, I have a long ways to go. But when it comes to faithfully giving God what is His, I'm not reluctant to do that anymore. Because God has been doing the work in my heart. So, the rich... They gave thousands and thousands of dollars to the temple. The widow, she came there with her two coins. And again, those are like fractions of a penny. But when the rich gave, 
Like, that was barely nothing. Them. That was just like pocket change. They could find that under their couch because they were that rich. But for the widow, when she gave, she gave completely. That was everything that she had. And today, I'm not telling you to come to the cross and empty out your bank account. Okay? <laughs> I'm not asking you for, you for you to do that. But you know how much God has blessed you with. You know there's an opportunity to give back to God what is truly His. So you're not hoarding all of His wealth. How faithful are you with the blessings that He has given to you? So how much did the widow really give? The answer is simple. She gave everything that she had. And today, God is asking for your heart. Are you willing to give everything in your heart of what belongs to God to him? So God's not asking everything from your bank account. But God is asking for you to dig deep and say, God, I know what's yours. I also know what's mine. And I need to be faithful to give to you what is yours. There's also a deeper message in this story as well. Besides the widow giving away everything that she had for God, in truth, the widow in her state of poverty, she could have fought. So I don't think anybody would have wronged her. I don't think anybody would have accused her of being a bad person by thinking like this. She could have thought, I only have two coins left to my name. Now is not a good time to give. I should wait until I have more money for me to give to God. I mean, think about this. Her husband had died, so that other income that she had, there was no additional income coming. Maybe that husband that died was the breadwinner. So now he's gone. She might not even have another job coming. So now she's left with two coins. I think a lot of us, if she was talking to us, and if she was asking for advice, now what would you do? I only got two coins left. You know, I think a lot of us would be like, hey woman, your husband just died, you're living in poverty, all you got is two coins left. You have every right to keep those two coins so that you can stay alive. I don't think any of us would have thought, you're a horrible person, if you would have just kept those two coins. I think a lot of us would have been like, it's okay. It's okay if you don't give. She could have thought totally like that. So here's my question to you. How many of us have been guilty of the same way of giving? God, I just can't give right now. The time is not right in my life right now to give. The circumstances are just not working. God, I know you're blessing me, not with a lot. I know you've given me a little bit, but God, this is just not the time for me to be giving to you. All of us have been guilty of this. Now is just not the right time. So, we have all thought Maybe now is not a good time to give to God. I just got to wait a little bit longer. So, here are excuses that we make for not giving to God what is His. And as a pastor, I've heard all of these. Okay? Number one, this is probably the excuse that I hear the most. Number one, I just don't have that much money. I would love to give to God. But I just really don't have that much money. So if that's the excuse that you have used for holding back your generosity from God, I want you to think about this. If you don't think that you can give to God what is His because you ain't got a lot of money, think about that, right? All she had was two coins, and yet she still gave it all to God. Now I know that none of us, we have ever come to our life where all we had left was just two coins. 
I truly believe that even in this room, God has been able to just bless us more. Number two, I'll give next time. God, if you can just wait, like next year, I'm going to get that promotion. God, if you can just wait next month, I'm going to get that better job. Now is just not the best time yet. So God, you just got to wait a little bit longer because the next time I come to church, I'm going to do it. God, the next time I get that paycheck, I'm going to do it. Just not now. God, the next time that I really get that dream job, I'm going to do it. I promise you I am going to do it. How many promises later? And we're still not being generous, faithful givers. It's time. It's kind of like this. Does anyone honestly think and believe, hey, we're going to have our kids when we have enough money? Does anybody go into a marriage and be like, hey, honey, we're just not going to have kids right now because you haven't gotten your dream job and, and I haven't made over $75,000 a year. But when we get to that point, we're going to start pumping out those kids. <laughs> All right. If you are a parent in this room, you know this is ridiculous. Nobody ever says, you know what, we're going to wait until that perfect day where we're going to have all of our finances in order and we're going to have those beautiful children of ours. If you believe in this, you're never going to have kids. Why? Why? You're never going to have enough money. So what do you do? You just have to have your kids. And you just have to pray. God, I'm a parent now. The little baby needs to eat. <laughs> they could only have breast milk for so long. After that, they're going to need their happy meals and they're going to need their Hong Kong buffets. Okay? And what is God going to have to do? God's going to have to provide through you so that you can feed your family. Okay? This is the same way of giving. If you think giving is going to be that perfect time, it ain't ever going to happen. Okay? How about this? I'm going to get married when I find that perfect person who meets all my criteria. All right. So they got to have the blonde hair. They got to have the blue eyes. And they need to be making over $100,000 a year. And uh, yeah, okay? Are you ever going to find that perfect soulmate? Are they going to meet every single criteria that you have? No. So what do you do? You just kind of like, you, you just have to think, all right, well, I really wanted this, but you're not that, so I guess I can live with that, right? And you jump into that marriage and you're like, God, you just got to take over this marriage. And it just needs to happen. So this is the same thing with finances and giving. There is never a perfect time. You just have to do it. And you just have to trust and have faith that God will provide. Has God ever made your children starve? No. Okay. God's been there to provide. All right. Excuse number three, I'll give to God when I get that better paying job. Ooh. So I have been guilty of this. Hey, God, I only got a bachelor's, okay? And if we're only a bachelor's, this is only how much money I make. So God, I'm working to get my master's. And when I get my master's, okay, I'm going to make like $10,000 more. And when I get $10,000 more, then I'll have extra discretionary funds. And then I'll be able to give you a little bit more money. Because right now, finances are tight. So God, if you can just wait in 12 months, I'm going to graduate that degree. I'm going to graduate that degree. Then I'm going to get that promotion. I'm going to get more money. So we think we're going to give more when we can just get that perfect job. This is my challenge for you. This might hurt a little bit, okay? This might sting a little bit. I want to challenge you with this. 
Are you maybe not getting that job that you want because you can't even show to God that you are faithful with the little money that is given to you? Some of you might be thinking, God, I just, you can just never give me enough money. And, and the message from above is this. God is saying, I am giving you money. I ain't giving you that million dollars that you want. I'm giving you money. But you can't even show me with the little money that I've given you that you're going to be faithful to return that back to me. So even if I give you mo more money, I don't even think that you're going to be faithful to give more money to me. In Matthew chapter 25, it says, you have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. It's the opposite. Here God says, Man, if you had, if, if I if I'm giving you just a thousand dollars and you've been faithful to give that little amount back to me, man, I am gonna bless you even more. If he gives you little and you're faithful with that, he's gonna bless you more. But if he's giving you little and you're just squandering all that money, then he's like, Well, why should I give that to you? Because you can't even show to me that you're responsible with the little amount. So maybe you haven't gotten that promotion, you haven't gotten that dream job or whatever because you're not even showing that you can be faithful with the little things that he's given you. Excuse number four, if I give to God, I won't be able to. So think about that. God, if I give that to you, well, we were planning to go on that vacation, but if I give that money, then I can't really go on that vacation. Well, God, if I give you that money, then I can't go and get all the clothes that I want. God, if I give you that money, I've been really looking at that boat. Oh, if I give you that money, then I won't be able to take the, the 16-footer. I might have to downsize it's only the 14-footer. And all the cool guys have got like the 16-foot bass boat. I can't look like that, right? Matthew chapter 6 says, So don't worry about these things, saying, What will you eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Guys, if you give generously to the Lord, He loves you so much, He ain't ever going to allow you to just go and live under the bridge. All right? I have never met a person that went homeless because they were giving too much money to God. I've seen the opposite. So I've been passing the cross for, you know, five years now. We've had homeless people come, and they've given money to the church, and I've only seen them be, be more blessed. I have never seen anybody come to the church and be like, all right, yeah, well, I don't have a whole lot of money, so here it is. And then the next week they come back, and they, they give me the guilt trip, hey, because... I gave my last hundred dollars to you, now I'm homeless under the bridge. I've never seen that happen before. Instead, the really cool thing is, I know of many stories in the church where people have been reluctant to give. And I say, just try it. And after five years, people's finances have actually been better because they had been faithfully giving to God. And so I'm hoping that before the end of this month, okay, that uh, we're going to have at least one individual come up here and give us their personal testimony about, man, I used to hold back on giving to God what was his. But because this person tried, God has been able to just actually bless that person more. All right. So in all honesty, here's what it really comes down to when we talk about giving. All right. So this is my message to all of you today. It is this. It's never a convenient time to give to God. There are things that you and I as human beings that we want that requires money, okay? So it's never a convenient time to give that money to God because there are things that you want. That's the honest truth. 
There will never ever be a time in your life when you will have all the money that you can finally start to give God his portions. You just have to do it now. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until next month, next year. You just have to do it now. You just have to put your faith and your trust in God that he'll sustain you and your family. So when we do our tithes and offerings for the church, sometimes the Bible verse comes up. And this, the Bible verse was actually the Bible verse that you guys saw in that video that I just played for you guys to see. And it says, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to, tr uh, to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. So here, here God is saying, man, if you truly want to be blessed, test me. Test me by giving me your portions. And I am going to show you so much blessings that you ain't going to have enough room to store all of your blessings. I believe if you're renting a storage unit right now, that means God is blessing you so much to the point where you can't even store your stuff in your house. You've got so much blessings. So why not return some of those blessings back to the Lord? And so I can't end it without talking about the gospel. God loves us so much that he gives us so much, but the greatest thing that God has ever given to us was his son, Jesus Christ. And so here at the end, this is my inspiration. It's just a quote. I want you guys to listen to what Billy Graham said about giving, all right? Billy Graham, one of the, Billy Graham, the most famous evangelist in all times, he says, God has given us two hands, one to receive with and the other to give with. So, take a look at the hands that God has given you. This left one, it represents everything that he has given to you. Okay? How much giving are you doing with both? Are you just a taker? God wants us to also be a giver. So here at the end, I want you to think about this. What's stopping you from giving today? Please pray about that for one minute, please. So here at the end, this is the reason why uh, the sermon question is, when is a good time to be generous to God? And you know what? Always a good time to be generous. All the time. And that's the reason why the sermon title is, Always Be Generous. Let's pray for the end here. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your message today. Thank you for speaking truth through me. Thank you for allowing me to be a vessel. And Lord God, uh, we just want to thank you so much for your message today through the story of the widow and her two coins. And Lord God, although she didn't have anything, Lord God, she, she gave whatever she could to you. And Lord God, in her life right now, we have been blessed with so much. Lord God, I would just ask that you would just con convict our hearts so that we can be generous to give to you what is yours. And Lord God, that you are not going to let uh, just abandon us you will not leave us, but instead, Lord God, you will bless us so much that, Lord God, that we are not going to have any room to store your blessings. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen.